were down here today at EA's London Showcase with Jesse Abney, who is the producer for Shift 2 Unleashed. Jesse, the game is out in March. It's January now. You must be kind of wrapping up by this point. Yeah, absolutely. Finishing touches, some polish, uh, certainly plans for post-launch development, uh, et cetera, et cetera, happening now. Uh, I've literally just sat down and played a few races. One of the things that you notice straight away is the, is the helmet cam. Tell us a bit about how it differs from the previous dashboard cam. Well, it's really a follow on Shift 2 Unleashed is a follow into that proposition of the true driver's experience and actually immersing the player in the driver's seat via the helmet cam, giving them one more layer of immersion and, and that uh, effects of G-Force on the driver. The actual play up of the driver's battle is kind of one of our design tenets. And the helmet cam now looks into the apex of the corner as you approach and hit your braking point. And so now it's an actual gameplay assistive device. And we've tuned this by engaging a lot more uh, GT1 uh, drift race drivers around the world and really honed in on exactly how that looks and feels to them day to day uh, to help bring the player closer to that experience in Shift 2. Uh, one other thing I noticed is that, you, and which you mentioned there, you get drivers introducing some of the races you're doing, you get to beat them, you get to take their cars. Can you tell us a bit about that and who you've got in the game? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole scope of our career design is to follow in the line of our Team Need for Speed Motorsports, which is over seven different racing disciplines. Although it's not linear, players will have the choice to tow into things like Time Attack and to take on our Time Attack champion and uh, Chris Rado with World Racing and the Team Need for Speed Scion. Um, if they choose, they can uh, perform good, uh, take him on in his car, and ultimately uh, win his car as a Time Attack champion on their way to becoming the GT1 FIA World Champion. So that's kind of the pinnacle point of the career, and in that, they'll cruise through many different events and many different motorsports, challenging bosses along the way from drift and retro street here in Europe, as well as uh, GT class racing, uh, muscle, uh, drag, and other elements of our Team Need for Speed Motorsport. I believe there's also a rumor doing the rounds that uh, EA's on Patrick Soderlund may be in the game. Well, he's certainly a member of Team Need for Speed and the, the FIA GT3 BMW Z4. So he's uh, definitely a participant in our motorsport program and certainly a participant in the game as well. well one other thing that I noticed, uh, very much like a, a modern first-person shooter, you always get an XP for whatever you're doing. If you master a corner or you know uh, do particularly well in a race, tell us about that process and how it w works with leveling up. Well, it's a career mechanic, really, that just goes towards a number of the unlocks in the career. Um, the, career the basis of the career is obviously car classes. As the player's progressing through the classes, they're having cars that, that match the AI grid. The AI is ratcheting up through adaptive systems, and through the career progression, they're getting unlocks based on their performance within a race in a number of different categories. Uh, so XP is being accumulated, even if they're not podiuming them, uh, uh, winning a podium finish rather uh, their first time out in an event, they're still achieving something. They're still achieving unlocks. They're still able to performance customize, tune their vehicle, come back even stronger with more knowledge of the car and the track to perform better. And as they are progressing through the career, they're earning XP towards their driver level. That goes further into online matchmaking, obviously, via Autolog, which is now Need for Speed DNA. And Ship 2 is able to take Autolog to a whole nother level with a, a whole level of micro data management uh, performance categorization as well as just um, comparisons against all your friend profile, world leaderboards and records sent around the globe that uh, uh, really just brings that social competition of racing to a whole new level. In fact, it builds upon what was in Hot Pursuit by actually giving you XP when you beat your friends, right? Absolutely. So XP is kind of a one level of the economy. And again, it, for us, it was the reward, even for players that may not be doing uh, finishing first every time or finishing first in their first events. Um, but it is building upon something. It's unlocking your uh, performance customization, most specifically, as you're doing stuff like corner match and setting segment times and allowing you to upgrade your car in order to stay competitive in the grid. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, Jesse, I was a little bit cheeky. I went into some of the uh, menus and had a look around. There was something called Driver Jewel Championship, which is online as well as offline. I haven't seen that before. Can you tell us a bit about it? Well, it's certainly uh, one of our online modes, um, one that we've been doing a lot of testing on, having a lot of fun with, but not something that we're getting into a lot of detail about today. So it's something that you guys can expect more in the weeks and months to come. Um, I also thought it was going to be more, you know, better crash damage, you know, it's an, an elite handling mode. Can you tell us a bit about those? Well, two different things, really. I mean, that, that, that 
driver's battle as that core design tenet is all the elements of a racing simulation, of a being in the middle of a competitive AI grid of uh, car and track degradation based on the incidences that happen on the track. Um, we have a full damage model now, as well as an elite simulation mode now for players that really want to play that uh, highest level of skill required to compete against the AI and compete against themselves on each track in each car. And so now you have full race ending damage states, you have full track debris, you have cars that end up in the ditch and in the kitty litter that remain there throughout the event. Um, in instances, you could bust an axle and have tires bouncing across the grid and have to actually avoid debris and such like that and all of those elements to us just play up that uh, driver's battle that's occurring moment to moment in every event um, especially with yourself night racing is a big element in ship too and the battle with yourself to actually keep that car on the track at the back side of spa um, really where it's darkest and, and scariest when you're doing 150 miles an hour and so it's uh, all those elements really play up that driver's battle I know for you guys at uh, Shift 2 um, Development Studio, you were very much about the driver's battle, but the cars themselves are looking very nice as well. You can do more, it seems, with the tuning and maybe even sell them online this time. Well, certainly the online feature is not something we're getting into, but the, the, the vehicle customization, uh, we've taken a step further. The, the car classes, the number of cars and the types uh, that they're representing now um, are, are varied. So they're varied just like the career. Um, we have classic cars that represent very popular platforms for going uh, from stock to works modified. Every vehicle in the game is now works modified, so we're actually able to uh, tune, uh, test, and compete uh, cars which may typically be uh, uh, lower categories in their base state, but as a works modified super beast running 800 horsepower, they're actually able to compete at the higher tiers. So there's elements like that throughout the career that players are going to get to experience through customization, tuning, and track testing. Uh, you're coming up to release now. Do you have any ideas about you know demos, post-release content at this stage? Uh, certainly plans uh, being talked about and, and planned for, and nothing we're exposing details about today, but uh, certainly expect more updates in the few short weeks to come. All right, Jesse, uh, tell us when the game is going to be coming out. You've nailed the release date down, I think now, and on what platforms? This is a March 25th release uh, here in Europe on uh, Xbox 360, PS3, uh, and PC.